I'm Preeti, Assistant Professor from the Department of Computer Science and Engineering. So in our last session, we focused on the software models. So let us just give you a recap of what was the last session all about. We focused on the flows, that is the process flows that included linear flows, parallel flows, concurrent flows, evolutionary flow. So focusing on these flows, then we moved on to the process models. The process models were divided into two broad categories, that is the prescriptive models and the specialized models. So coming to the prescriptive models, we have seen what was a waterfall model focusing on. And then we have seen the V model and some drawbacks for the water, waterfall model, making us move to the V model. Then we had the structure of the spiral model. And then we have incremental model. And then we focused on the other parts called the formal uh, specialized models. So coming to our today's discussion, the focus is on the software project management. I repeat, today's discussion is on the topic software project management. So what is this software project management? Right? Suppose we analyze the term management. Let us take what is this management? Right. So if you uh, look into the things like management members, management committee team, management people of an institution, of an organization, of a company, of a school or anything of that sort. It is nothing but they are a spectrum of people. In the other words, it's the management spectrum. So our today's discussion is completely focusing upon what is a software project what are the advantages, disadvantages? Who are the people involved in the software project? How are they being managed by the high level cadre and all these things? So looking at the agenda today, the management spectrum, first discussion is on the management spectrum that involves the people, product, process and project. So these are the four broad categorization of the management spectrum. We can say that spectrum is like a band of colors and the management committee holds all these four things together. That is the people, product, process and project. Now, once you elaborate people, that is when you consider people, who are the different kind of people involved and what are we going to talk about all those people? Initially, we start off with stakeholders. What are their tasks? What they have to do? What are their duties? Uh, how are their duties responsible to the other people? And what are their inputs? What are their considerations? What are they specifying? All these things will be discussed under stakeholders. And we'll be discussing about team leaders, software team, agile teams, their coordination and communication issues. So I repeat, these are the five major things that we study under the category of people. They are stakeholders, team leaders, software team, agile team, coordination and communication issues. So moving to the next category of the management spectrum, that is the product. So coming to the product, initially we have to know what a scope of that project is. So in the other terms, it is called as software scope. Then Problem decomposition. So problem decomposition also come under the category of product. Moving forward, we will be seeing process, which is the fourth category of the management spectrum. Under the process, we will be dealing about melding the product and the process. Melding the product and the process and again the process decomposition. In the product, we'll be discussing about the problem decomposition. In the process, we will be discussing about the process decomposition. Then finally, we will be focusing on what exactly is a project from the initial stages to the end user. And the last is the V5HH principles. So moving further, let's start off by giving you an introduction on what is the management spectrum, right? Basically, this management spectrum focuses 
on the four P's. That is, I have already stated, they are people, product, process and project. So the effective software project management. If you want your project management or if you want your software project that you are working on to be very effective, giving us an ultimate, accurate, optimal results, they are focusing on four P's where the involvement of these four P's is very, very important. That is the people, product, process and project. Okay, right. So coming to people factor, there's a term called people factor and it is termed to be very important because it is leading to a technique or you can say it is a people capability maturity model. In short, it is called as people CMM. Meaning, this is relating to people factor. How importance you have to give to the people? What are the things that have to be uh, executed when they are stating something? How they have to mingle in a group? How they have to perform? What are their duties? All these things are the people capability maturity model, also called as people factor. It is so important so that all their duties are focused in the management spectrum. Right. And coming to the last point, that is every organization needs to continually improve the ability to attract the attract the end users, develop good quality models, motivate the people in the team, outside the team to do the best things, organize the sh planned schedule properly, then retain the workplace. That is trying to encourage the people who are there to do more things with better facilities needed to accomplish some good business objectives, right? So a recap of the management spectrum, it is nothing that it is involving four P's, people, product, process, and project. You have a people factor that goes with the people capability maturity model that is people CMM. It's a technique that is being defined and it tells us that Every organization needs to continuously improve the things on how to develop, how to motivate, how to organize the things, retain the workplace by giving. Uh, if you are doing all this, then you will get a better business outcomes. Right. So moving to another part or the continuation of the management spectrum. The people capability model is defining some key practice areas of the software people. Now, who are they? On what is that people capability modeling rely on? It is relying on the staff, communication and their coordination and the work environment. Next, it is the performance, management, training, compensation and so on. So let us start with staffing or in other uh, terms, you can say it is staff. It should focus on how importance uh, it is giving to that particular staff. And how does the communica communication go on? It should be a healthy communication. The coordination of the work should be very good. If the coordination is good, then the outcome that is obtained when you are trying to design something, it, it will give us the best results. Then work environment, trying to encourage the people who are not knowing the things, trying to make them understand the technology, make them know the technology so that they'll be able to implement their own works when they are assigned something and trying to get, if all these things are done, the performance is improved, right? And some training also has to be given so that every each and every day, there are a lot of updations where people have to know the things properly and proper analysis of the work, then the development and the culture development. That is, you have to have, you have to move with ease in an organization. So all these will bring up the people capability maturity model that defines about all these and talks about all these parameters. The last point that focuses organizations that achieve high levels of people CMM. That is, whatever things I have stated on the top, they are nothing but the features or the characteristics or the listed important notions of what is people CMM. If every organization is able to achieve this people CMM, it makes their software project very effective in their practice. 
okay moving to the next part of our discussion that is the product right what is a product it is nothing but a uh, it is a deliverable product right before a project is planned or before a product that can be planned first thing you have to divide, uh, define are your goals what you want to achieve for this particular product what are the objectives or what are the goals mainly what is the scope of this particular project so the first point that you have to remember is the objectives and the scope of the product next you should also have some alternative solutions they can either be some general features or some technical features or something related to some management all of them have to be identified next without all these information it is impossible to re reasonable it is impossible to define reasonable and estimate the cost what does all this mean if you are trying to work out something you are trying to define some modules right once the modules are defined check whether you have some proper solutions to it right even though you have some uh, existing solutions try to put some alternative solutions also so that uh, you can estimate the cost of it all these things once all this is done an assessment of risk also has to be focused so these are the four main things of the product i repeat firstly you need to have the product objectives and then you need to know the scope up till where you can execute this and you need to have alternate solutions and then uh, if you know this or uh, know all these things you will be able to estimate the cost and assessment of the risk also has to be monitored so that next time when you are trying to execute when a risk has occurred you will try to uh, rectify them and execute in a much better way next moving to the software process which is another section in the management spectrum right looking at the first point it says it is trying to provide a framework right in our previous discussions we have discussed lot about what is a framework what are the different sets of framework activities they are called as umbrella activities right so framework which is trying to depict a complete plan for the development of the software and it includes small number of framework activities i repeat a small number of framework activities which are applicable to all software projects right so initially you have to define a structure that structure is called as a framework which is trying to tell us about the complete plan of your process and initially we are supposed to define some small set of activities that are applicable to some software projects right if your tasks are complex if your tasks are more in number or it's a larger process then our focus should be on the tasks the milestones meaning they are like the checkpoints and the work products quality assurance so every time if your project is too high too large with more number of modules your focus has to be completely on what are the modules that you have divided completely have a check with the help of the milestones Com all the time assess with the quality assurance points and all this enables you to have a perfect project team coming to the last points as we have discussed earlier the umbrella activities these are the set of activities defined under a software framework architecture right they completely focus on how good your module have to, your process model has to be delivered in a proper way right it focuses on assurance that is quality assurance quality assurance is a very very important term in all this management spectrum because if the quality is good you get more number of uh, things asked for generation or more number of projects will be assigned if you don't maintain a proper quality then your it starts degrading the graph starts degrading so these are the things that we see in the software process which is having a flow in the different terms you start with communication end with deployment they are forming different flow of uh, the diagrams that is we have discussed the linear flow the parallel flow the iterative flow all these things so moving to the next area that is the project under the management spectrum band 
project is nothing but it is trying to form a planned and a controlled software or in the other terms you are conducting a planned and a controlled software that's the first main reason you have to know what you are doing first and for what you are doing what is your final uh, end product that you are doing then they have to focus on the complexities whatever has been planned are you able to solve them right that complexities have to be known and you also have to manage them the next one that is the third point you should avoid some project failures that is if you are trying to execute your project one two three goes of failures is fine but more number of failures leads to the distraction of your project so it is like you have to avoid project failures that is how do you know about all this there are people who try to monitor they are the software project managers and another set of software people who try to build the project to avoid some set of common warning signs so they provide us with some warning signs so that we will, the people who are in the team will know that uh, it is a danger or they have to not be repeated and all these things you will be able to avoid those project failures right next the last one is the trying to understand crucial success factors meaning how do you meet the success how do you reach the success only when your approach to planning monitoring and controlling the project is in your hands is within your boundary you are not letting it out or uh, not analyzing the things properly if you are doing everything that is the three main factors that is if the planning monitoring and controlling goes well then the success rate of your project will improve as the diagram depicts you will start off with so many basic things and ultimately you have to reach the topmost point which is your final product in the lower level you have so many set of people so many and uh, different uh, notions of ideas they have and basing upon your project you have to fit in those right people having the right knowledge checking out their uh, progress every now and then there is nothing but scheduling and uh, trying to have the check on their milestones and trying to reach the topmost model fine next when you talk about the people right coming to the people there is a standard ieee definition which states there were a group of vice presidents who spoke about three major technology companies they have stated few answers what exactly is the people should be or who are the people they are nothing but looking at the first vice president one who says most important in our environment what is this most important in our environment that is in our working area or in an organization when you are trying to work he says that more than the tools the people's importance is more that is it's not the tools that we use it's the people who should be given most importance right that is one of the standard definition given coming to the second one the most important are the smart people now what do you mean by smart people and a normal people or anything like that right if a task is given to two individuals let that individual be individual 1 and individual 2 i1 and i2 right and i1 is given the same task as the i2 but i2 his skills his technology skills all the things are more so work that has to be finished in an half an hour time span he just finishes in 5 hour 5 hour, minutes just because he knows the technology well and what has to be implemented that is smart people smart work so that has to be entertained among the people right next the third one the only rule that management has to ensure is trying to have the good people around in an organization so what do you mean by good people real people who seriously want to know the things grow with the technology learn the things and use them use them use them meaning uh, whatever tools are arising using those tools in the work that they execute right so these are the three notions of different people the first one i repeat it is not the tools that are important it is the people the second one is important are the smart people the third one is you should have good people real people who try to learn the things know the things implement those things in their uh, daily works and the uh, all this brings in healthy environment so this is a standard definition by ieee on the people so moving further under the people category the first one are the stakeholders now who are the stakeholders 
you have we have different sections of people uh first one are the senior managers then you have project managers practitioners customers and the end users so these are the different people whom we termed under one category that is the stakeholders now what is the task of senior managers the name itself is saying senior managers so he has to completely focus on the final end product that is the business issues he has to know the business he has to study the business what are the issues related to those business is taken care by the senior managers coming to the project managers or in the other terms they are also called as technical managers what do they do they try to plan motivate organize control practitioners who do software work i repeat what is the task of project managers or also called as technical managers they have to plan the things motivate the people in their team to work to organize everything properly organizing everything properly meaning if it is properly scheduled what are the today's duties it will be completed on time right and you can again have a, a testing portion done on the part that has been completed then trying to control the practitioners next who are the practitioners practitioners are the people who specify the requirements for the software right as simple they are trying to uh, the practitioners sorry practitioners deliver the technical skills and customers will specify the requirements so i repeat practitioners come under the category of project managers or technical managers what do they do they deliver the technical skills right coming to customers they are trying to specify the requirements basing upon the requirements given by the customer the software has to be developed right end user once everything is ready we interact with the software and it is released and it is giving to it's given to the end user who gives us a feedback on how the software is so these are the main people under the category of stakeholders under the people section so moving further next are the team leaders for uh the the people itself so you have a term called moi model of leadership so the name itself says model of leadership where motivation comes into existence so what is this motivation you are trying to encourage trying to push or pull people trying to involve them in the process if they are not interested put them in another one which they are comfortable with next you are trying to have organization the ability to mold the existing process and trying to trying to unfold and fold them or unfold and refold as you say the ability of mold existing process that will enable initial concept to be translated to the final product right i repeat under the team leaders we have to say the team leader is a one who is trying to own a team who try, who's trying to take care of his team members so he he is acting as a leader and what is his first task he has to motivate motivation is a very very important term in a, each and every section of work that is you have to encourage the people in your team encourage the coworkers if the team leader is trying to encourage their own people then the individual tries to cooperate with his uh, team member right next organization it is trying to mold the existing process get acquainted to the new things that are existing and ideas and innovations try to create try to innovate the things try to implement and uh, try to be very creative in simple terms right all these things the team leader has to have and he ha- also has to uh, tell all these to his members as well so moving to some basic characteristics of what a team leader has to hold is the problem solving skills he should be able to analyze what the problem is how is he going to execute plan and estimate the cost at the initial stages next the managerial activity that is trying to take the charge of the project trying to change take the charge of the project is nothing but he is trying to prove his identity at the topmost level next we have achievement right must reward initiative and accomplishment to optimize the productivity of the project team that is he has to show that he has achieved the tasks that have been Uh, done by him or his team members and finally influence and team building influence the others in good ways try to 
build a team if your team is of 10 members if your if that particular leader is very good at prob problem solving skills he is able to manage everything properly he is trying to take charge of the project properly then he will be able to read the people and try to understand them and trying to give them whatever they are good at whatever the those people in his team are comfortable at and he tries to control all these things so i repeat problem solving managerial identity achievement and influence and team building these are the four major things a team leader has to hold so moving further we have software team this again is under the people uh, coming under the people right there are seven major factors that have to be considered for a software engineering team the first one is the difficulty meaning whatever is the project the difficulty has to be shared by the entire software team to solve the problems to analyze the problems next the size of the resultant program meaning how many lines of code what are the function points in that particular code next is the time until the entire project is executed all of them have to stay together that is called team lifetime next degree to what which problem can be modularized meaning up till where that the problem can be uh, made normal next quality and reliability is also a very important thing in building up a project and the same thing also should be there with the software team next the delivery date you have to rigid be rigid to the delivery date meaning you have to fix yes i have to release i have to send it for release on this particular day if you are not sending it for that particular day next time when the clients try to give us a project they say that oh this particular company x y z is not delivering the things online so he goes and for uh, goes to another company to take to have some other options right so if you are rigid at the delivery day then the things go fine and the last one is the sociability in simple terms communication always have a healthy communication so that the people are good the team leader is good then the management is also good at all the things right so moving to the next category under the people are the agile teams now what do you mean by this agile teams they are agile philosophy it focuses on few factors the first one is the customer satisfaction right how satisfied is your customer after looking at your product that is a very very important point right if the customer is not satisfied whatever you have done for 3 months 6 months a year or a two goes waste right so everything has to be properly monitored and given to the, shown to the uh, users that is shown to the customer every now and then then taking the reviews from him updating any reviews that he that he needs right if it is going in a proper to and fro manner then there is a customer satisfaction and next time we the we get more number of projects it's like that and early increment delivery of the software so what is the second point trying to tell you as in our previous discussions we have seen incremental module which is trying to divide the entire project into different modules each module is considered as an increment that is if you are trying to do some uh, video you try to edit them in different parts right trying to check out how good is the first part then you move to the second then you move to the third in the same way whatever you have planned out you check the first module considering it as a first increment any problems you rectify them in the second so on so early increment delivery of the software you have to give the client the initial work that has been done if he is satisfied and if he has no issues then you can proceed further the next one is small highly motivated project teams that is you start off with small amount of people who are dedicated who who show complete dedication and who are motivated to uh, do different things next you have informal methods that is you try to have some set of other solutions if the existing things are not working try to have another set of methods which can be involved in the process next minimal software engineering work products that is all the time you have you should have minimum considerations and overall development simplicity so all these features come under the agile teams who concentrate on the customer satisfaction early increment then some various informal methods then minimal software works and simplicity in the development right moving to the next cadre of the people communication and coordination issues right 
issues related to communication and coordination what are these issues under the people people comprise of different sections they are trying to communicate among themselves and coordinate in their work so obviously there are some issues that arise what are those issues development efforts is large so what does this mean whenever your uh, software product or project that you are trying to do is large then it may lead to complexity obviously more number of people involved then you have some kind of confu confusions then you have difficulties in coordinating the teams so this particular slide is completely focusing on what are the issues what are the problems if there is no proper sync between people in the team that is if the project is too large there is a confusion there is no proper coordination next uncertainty that is continuing stream of changes that is if you are trying to bring lot of changes in your plan you will not have uncertainty that also has to be removed so that you don't have any issues in your communication and coordination next is interoperability that is has become a key factor of many systems you should interoperability that is you think of something and you try to change the things very now and then last one is new software must communicate with the existing software this last point is very very important to create confusion among people there are few set of people who want to use the legacy softwares and there are few uh, people in the same team who want to go with the new technologies there also another clash occurs which again creates an issue right next moving to the next broad section of the software management it is the product right whenever you say product as i have initially told you scope is very very important right what is software scope it is divided in terms of context information objectives their function and performance so whenever you say scope of a project scope of a software sorry it involves context information objectives and their functionality what do you mean by context that is how does the software to be built fit into the larger system what do you mean by context what is the main purpose of you to develop the software where are you trying to fit the software into which stream all these things come under the context information objectives is nothing but whatever data is there with you are you able to bring out the goals out of the data that is there with you that is what customer visible data objects are produced and as outputs what are the customer visible data objects acting as outputs and what data objects are acting as inputs so the diff the combination of all this inputs and outputs talks about the information objective that is it is trying to frame a goal for you or the end user and lastly is the function and the performance what are the various important functions for the inputs and the outputs that have been specified so all these things will define what scope is next is problem decomposition right the name itself decomposition is nothing but trying to divide the given process into different modules you're trying to reduce it decompose it in the other terms it is called as partitioning or problem elaboration why do you decompose so that you cannot do all the things at one go or there are some problems creating you try to partition it or you try to elaborate that particular problem and involve different requirement analysis or analysis as a whole on those particular partitioning concepts right next this decomposition focuses mainly on two things as you can see the first point the functionality and the content must be delivered right whenever you are deco uh, decomposing that is whenever you are decomposing a problem each and every decomposition that is in how many ever modules you have reduced each and every one has to be properly delivered next as humans we focus on the divide and conquer strategy divide and conquer if the problem is too tough you try to divide it solve it individually and then at the end you try to merge there are various algorithms that involve divide and conquer strategies right and in the other ways a complex problem is partitioned into smaller pro problems where the beginning of the planning starts or the initiation of the project starts 
whenever you have partitioned the things i repeat whenever you have partitioned the things there the project planning has started fine moving to the framework activities as we have seen that involves in a software process the problem is to select a process model which model will you select right so the diagram that is there it is trying to show you the melding the product and the process in different terminologies so looking at the diagram over here you have common framework activities that we have already discussed which are communication planning modeling construction and deployment these are the five major fields in a framework activity or in other terms these are the activities or characteristics in the software process they involve lot of engineering tasks like what are the functions what are the test text inputs that you are able to do while you are communicating or planning so it is like which field is there is there in which area where does the text input occur where is the formatting happening where is the page layout happening or what are the file managements document production so this is a simple scenario where it shows how do you meld the product with the process so moving further you have process decomposition initially we have seen the project decomposition here it is the process decomposition what does it say it is trying to accomplish framework activities by giving a set of listed statements first one is you have to develop a list of clarification issues meaning what are the issues that are there that has to be brought out first then meet the stakeholders meet the people who are involved discuss issues with them next develop a scope for whatever issues you have solved once you have discussed them try to give a statement for what is your scope now and then modify them review the scope modify the scope all these things has to be done in less than 48 hours span so this is process decomposition moving further we have five major approaches so to software project which is the last cadre in the management spectrum first thing is start on the right foot meaning you are supposed to understand the realistic approach of what exactly has to be done next maintain the momentum what do you mean by maintain a momentum that is try to have a good start right then slowly disintegrate the start should be very good try to maintain the momentum as nothing but intensive in uh, sorry incentives need to be given to high quality of tasks and the people involved try to perform different senior management uh, people do and senior management focuses on everything possible that is way out of the team so i repeat you need to start off on the right foot that is work hard to understand the people and then setting the realistic objectives start on the right foot meaning try to specify your goals what are the major tasks you have to do in your project maintain momentum maintain momentum is nothing but try to have a good start try to uh, all the time acknowledge the work that has been done and intense uh, incentives used to be need to be given for high quality and senior management should do everything possible for the team right whatever they require they have to be do it and the next one is tracking the progress how much you have done so every day if you monitor what work has been done then you can plan out when will i be able to deliver my project that is progress is tracked as the word uh, work products like you can say some source code some some kind of test cases uh, test cases are delivered trying to use different techniques for those test cases trying to say how good is the quality and how the assurance of that quality is all these things are like involved in the track progress right and uh, continuing with few other features in the project make smart decisions that is try to keep it simple and you have one more thing called post mortem analysis it is nothing but try to focus on one single mechanism and calculate the planned and the actual schedules what is your schedule that is already planned and then get the feedback record those in a written manner i repeat there are two things to make your decisions smart that is keep it simple what work you are doing keep it simple and you have something called post mortem analysis which is come which is focusing on the techniques that are used 
the way you have planned the things and the sh schedules are going in a proper order or not, trying to take the feedbacks and then trying to write or record those findings manually. Right. And coming to the last things of our discussion, that is W5HH principle. Now, what is this W5? We have some five questionnaires that is talking for the W. That is, why is the system being developed is the first uh, W5 question. What will be done is the second. What will be, when will it be done is the third question. Who is responsible for the function? Where are they located organizationally? So I repeat, we have five F, W, F, H, H principles that in, involves five questionnaires for W, which is talking under the software project management. So when you take software project management as a whole, you should be able to understand and answer these questionnaires. What are they? I repeat, why is the system being developed? What is the main intention for us to develop this system? You should know. What will be done if you are developing the system? And when will it be done? Meaning you are scheduling. You, are, you should go according to your schedule. When will it be done? And who is responsible for the function? As we have discussed different people, they are the people who are responsible for all these things. So this is the four W's and the last W questionnaire are where are they located organizationally? Meaning in the organization, the people that you have stated, who is taking which position in a company is given by the fifth question of W. And we said W5HH principle. Now, what is the first H? H is how will the job be done technically and manageably? Meaning whatever job has been taken, how technically sound are you? How technically good are you implementing it? Are you able to manage all the things properly? And next, how much resources is needed? That is, resources have to be there. If the resources are not available, the work will, will be staying there only. The work will not take its progress. So resources are very, very important in any section of work. So I repeat the two heads. How will the job be done technically and manageably? Meaning, how technical the job is and how will it be done? Who are the people who are trying to manage the things, who are able to do the things? And how much of resource is needed for the specific work that you are doing? So this ends the discussion of software project management. Thank you. Like, share and subscribe. Hit the bell icon for more updates.